Hello Akron fans, welcome to another exhibition match cast stream session. Starting out today with a match on Tomb of Heroes between Kron Aberrant and Shalka. So let's just get that started up then. So oh, Kron Aberrant is starting the west side of the map as Grekum and Shalka is starting the east side of the map probably as Vec- you know, as Grekum. I'm gonna say probably as Vecchio, but I think he actually goes random most of the time. So both Shalka and Kron Aberrant are going Grekum in this match. Shalka sending out his Akron over Kron Aberrant immediately, as per normal, as Kron Aberrant doing the same. Both players using their Akrons for scouting, which is very typical in Assassin mode, because Akrons can't do anything else. And Grekum doesn't have really good scouting. They they just can't easily get units set up to scout, compared to the other two species. So the Akron really makes up for that. So Shalka getting himself over, and also building up his economy, so getting three RPs. Well, only two of the RPs will actually build, the third Octo will just hang around for a bit because Shalka does not have the money to actually afford all three RPs right now. Kron Aberrant, on the other hand, is building up... Where is he building up? Okay, he's paused building up something. Oh, is he going? There we go. Okay, so Kron Aberrant doing the same thing, getting his RPs up as well. So both players are going to be set up for economy. There's that Octo I mentioned. So Shalka will be able to build an RP with that, so he has four up. Both players, like I said, going heavily for economy, and on Tomb of Heroes, which is this map, economy is very powerful. It's much easier to build up since there is a fairly large distance between the two bases. There is a high rush or a long rush distance, so it's not easy to just punish someone for going economic in their play. Whereas on smaller maps, of course, it comes up a lot. You get a lot of all-in rushes, or you used to get a lot of all-in rushes, particularly, but. You get a lot of rushes anyway. On a map like Tomb of Heroes, it doesn't really come up. So, we are not going to be seeing much beyond just economy for the first few minutes, and then probably building up pretty quickly to tech, and of course, probably some assassination attempts, but that Akron is going to be echoed out if it's, if it's threatened anyway. So, not a big deal. Anyway, Kron Aberrant has not yet started to get up any seppies for tech yet. He's, he might be continuing to build up his RPs. Shalka is getting another RP, or getting another Octo. He might be getting it for... Let's see what he's doing. He is getting it for defense, more than anything. Trying to intercept this Akron right here that we saw before, so that's actually the Octo we saw earlier that was attacking here. If it went over here, it would be intercepted a lot nicer. But no, Shalka is, in fact, aborting that completely, going for another RP. So both players now have some Q-Plasma income, though Kron Amarant got it much earlier, but has less Liquid Crystal income. So at this point, Shalka is slightly ahead. And beyond that, there isn't really much to say, because both players are still just trying to set up their early game. Get rid of the other Akron if they can, though Shalka hasn't really been scouting, actually. Shalka has been keeping his Akron in his base. Kron has been much more aggressive with the scouting. Which is typical for Assassin mode, so I'm a little bit surprised that Shalka hasn't used his Akron as much. He might not have played this mode as often. But yeah, we see oftentimes, Kron Aberrant especially, but players in general in Assassin mode will be sending their Akron into the other side for as long as they can, really. They try to just keep it going, because every time you scout, on every time wave, there'll be more information. Your opponent will have done new things, and you'll be able to see the next things they've done. So it's always good to scout continuously in this game. Scouting once gets you very little information. And Shalk, on the other hand, is... Well, he's still building up another Octo. I'm not sure if he's going to go for his full triad yet, try to get Seppies and build up... Yes, he is, in fact, going for a full triad. Getting a Seppi and a Faro. I don't know, too far, oh, sorry. Too far, trying to intercept Kron Aberrant's Akron. Won't amount to much, and you really should have a Sepiana Faro if he wants to tech up with that. Kron Aberrant at this point actually has quite a lot of money coming in. And he does have an Octopod coming up for defense. No Seppies, though. I'm a bit surprised. It... Kron Aberrant is one to go for early tech. There's that Seppi, okay. Never mind, there's the Seppi I'm looking for. Because he's one to go for fairly early tech, so I was a little bit surprised I didn't see a Seppi coming up in the first place. But yeah, Kron Aberrant is getting in quite a bit of cash coming in and he could easily get a reef he doesn't have any q plasma coming in yet so he's probably waiting for 80 lc in order to build another rp on q plasma and shock on the other hand back when he is he's that's when he looks like he's building up his octos for another rp he has a couple extra octos as well so really focused on intercepting and pushing away that akron but I think Kron is probably going to stop scouting at this point. He's probably assuming he can't get in. And Shalka... Oh, Shalka's actually going in for a small rush. The Octo is sending in the three-minute mark to try to attack 
Ground Hammer do some damage, it might actually be able to do something. This Octopod, while it is in a good position to avoid getting hit by melee attacks... Oh, never mind, it's moved out of the way. Okay, it's in a bad position to get it to engage with melee opponents. But, Ground Hammer actually still hasn't given up scouting. He's still trying to go in and see what's going on. I guess he hasn't aborted the orders that his Akron did have. However, it doesn't seem aware of the Octos coming in that will be dealing some damage. Not a huge amount of damage. Well, actually, four Octos might actually be dealing a pretty big amount of damage. Reef support on an Octopod. Actually, two Reefs on an Octopod should be able to fend off the Octos long enough. But the Octopod's going to be out of position when the Octos attack. The Octos are coming in right now the 430 mark. And that is going to be a third Reef coming up, but that Reef will be blocked. And the Octopod is in position, in range of both Reefs, and out of position... Or, not out of position, actually in great position. He's away from the Octos. It looks like he's out of position at first glance, but because the Octopod has a fairly long range, because the range increases in the last version, I actually forgot about that. So the yeah, Octopod is actually much longer range than it used to, which means it has no problem taking care of these Octos. And with now three re-supporting it, along with this Octo here, yeah, these Octos will basically do no damage whatsoever. They might be able to kill one, now they kill one Octo at the price of one of their own, but even with this, the best the Shogun can hope for is to maybe drain the Reef, but even then, they're only half gone. And this Octopod, able to deal a fair amount of damage, but Shaka moving his Octos out of the way, trying to get into a better position to keep the Octopod distracted, actually managing to kill one Octo for pretty much free. But no, the, the Octo able to escape, get fully healed up, and the attacking Octos do not do any damage as Guardian, as Crimer's Guardian comes back. So really, no harm done. There, not much has really changed from this. Rishalka didn't actually accomplish much of anything. Looks like he's trying to re-micro this battle load, trying to make it go a bit more in his favor. But really, Kron Abern is very nicely set up defensively. Three Octos will likely not drain the three Reefs that are there of energy in any appreciable amount of time. So there's really no way that Shalka can actually deal with any, deal any significant damage to this. He might be able to, like I said, kill an Octo or two. But he needs to kill at least four or five Octos in order to make cost on this. And clearly he's not confident he can do so. So just making sure that this expansion is not taken anytime soon. Not a bad idea, though Kron Amaranth tends not to expand that quickly. So Shaka will want to keep an eye on that for the next five or ten minutes or so. Because it's possible Kron Amaranth will expand in the north or possibly even expand further south than this natural expansion. But we'll see, and Shock actually is... No, he's changing his orders again, going into the main base, trying to do a damage he can to Kron Aberrant, but not really all that much. It looks like Kron Aberrant will be... No, he's going to be defending this no problem. The four Octos coming in with the Octopod support. So Kron Aberrant in a much better position to set up, actually, an attack of his own. He could go for a counterattack right now. It looks like he may be, in fact, doing that. Shaka in his base has his Reef up. Both players are getting advanced structures at about the same time. It looks like Kronheimer will have his done slightly sooner. No, actually, it's about the same. Yeah, so both players are pretty much simultaneously getting their basic tech. However, Kshalk is in a better position to start getting air units, better position to get his spires, more Q-plasma, so he can actually build up air units immediately after getting advanced structures. Well, Kronheimer will have to wait a bit. Kronheimer still has... He has some Q-plasma income. He's building more RPs, so he's not going for military engagement with these Octos. He does have them set up for fence, though, but... Looks like he's planning on setting all of them up for economy pretty soon. And it's probably not a bad idea, given that air units are going to be coming up very shortly. And Shalka also getting a defensive Octopod of his own, just in case there is a counterattack, which there isn't. But in the event there is, that wasn't a bad idea. And Karnaman actually trying to get a dome as well, interestingly. So not focused on getting air units too quickly, focused much more on defense. Where Shalka, on the other hand, is focused on air units, and does have his fire up, he should be able to get... Well, when he wants to. I mean, he has the Q-Plasma before, but he doesn't have Liquid Crystal. So when he gets that Liquid Crystal, then he can start building Sepipods and Faropods. Right now, however, Octopod and Parafaro is coming in to try to attack. So Shaka's still going for this offensive. Keeping three Octos... Well, in Progen mode to regenerate their health. But keeping three Octos outside of Crown Emerald's base. And one of them actually in a resource processor in the south. Not a bad idea. So Shaka... That's where he's getting his extra Q-Plasma income, is that little base to the south, whereas Crown Aberrant keeping all of his income in his main base, as he usually does. So see, 5 LC versus 4 LC. So Crown has a sl has a slight economic advantage, but he spent some of it on the dome and is just now getting a Spire. However, he could afford an a Faropod. Right now, in fact. 
or just about. He's clearly trying to get one. He's getting the non of resources notice, which means he's probably trying to build a fire pod. Might be trying to build a heavy pod, and no, just going for an octo, surprisingly. Oh, I see. He's going to the center of the map, building up defenses there. A couple domes going very forward on that. While Shaka, his assault coming in. His octos are... Well, they were coming in. It looks like they might have an echoed out. Oh, never mind. I'm not looking at Shaka's point of view. Shaka's point of view. At the 817 mark, there are octos and faros coming in. And, of course, the octopod of the north. So going for a nice little flank attack on all angles. All entrances, actually. But it won't likely work that well. Between the dome and the octopod... It's a fair amount of assault force coming in, but I think that Shalk is going to lose it all for some damage, but not a huge amount, and he isn't even going for the center. Granted, the center is actually going to be pretty well defended, pretty hard to break. But even then, I'm a bit surprised at what's going on. So, the Osh is coming in, able to deal, actually able to deal with the dome completely, killing the dome without dying themselves, although one of them does die to an octopod. But the Faro is coming in and dealing quite a bit of damage as well, so this octopod is going to be going down very shortly, while the Akron getting attacked directly. And the Sacron's going to be going down very soon. Kramer, back at this point in time, at the 857 mark, he has some options to defend. Nice defense there, too, but the Domes will be able to... Actually, Dome will be able to take care of this. So, second pass around. Looks like Kramer is better able to defend against this. However, the Dome will still go down. However, not for free that time. So, Shalka's Assault still not dealing a huge amount of damage. Shalka, back in his base, is not building any air units yet. He's... No, he is actually not able to. He doesn't have enough money to do so. But Cronomer is. Cronomer has a Faro pod coming up, which will be able to take care of everything here. The Faro's too far out of range to deal with the dome and more focus on the Octopod and Faro pod. So Shalka should undo this assault completely. Faro pod up, cloaked, and will be able to continue defending and finish off the defense, actually. So Shalka needs to go back. There's no way he can win this fight. He cannot deal enough damage fast enough. He probably should have waited a bit further into the unplayable pass before doing that. And when I was right in the info past edge before doing that. But all he could really do, however, he does manage to kill the Octopod, which is something but really not enough for the amount of money he spent on this. That's really not enough. If he has a Sepipod coming up, though, that could very much help. No tech, though. It has enough Q-Plasma for legal class units to be viable, but really what he needs is to get more Liquid Crystal and get more well, air units, really. But he's not getting any of those. He is, however, getting a dome inside of Carnarvon's base. Bit of a risky move, though, it would be able to detect the Faropod. And the Ocho doing what it can, but dealing really no damage. These Reefs are... See how drained they are. The Reefs are actually pretty drained. One of them is fully drained, the other two are... Actually, these two are almost completely drained. One of them is half... Half full, but... Still not doing well. And Shalka attacking this base here. Taking out the North base. Losing... Actually, it looks like maybe losing nothing in the process. No, losing one of his Octos in the process, but... His second Octo will be able to finish it off, and no! Just barely, the Dome survives with three health. While the main base has been defended, we saw that already. So, Shalka setting up his own Faropod, and will be attacking with that, attacking the North base with that, finish off the Dome, and then finish off this resource processor, so it has a slight economic advantage now. With... Well, actually, no, he's a slight Q-Plasma advantage, but... Full economy, not really an advantage. And Carnivore has a massive advantage, massive amount of money in the bank. He wasn't spending any money during that assault. Not a terrible idea, given that he was getting directly attacked, but now he really needs to spend... Oh, never mind. From his point of view, he does actually have no real money in the bank. So he's going to be spending that money when he gets the chance. And spending it quite hard. So Shalka is going to have a lot... I don't think he's going to be able to get it. He's going to have a lot of opposition when it comes to trying to deal with everything that Carnivore has. Carnivore escaping, very cleverly using the terraces, though it's not probably going to be enough. The Faropod can still hit the resource processor and will be able to beat it. While Cronimer scouting around trying to see where Shalka has expanded to. I don't think he'll ever find it in the south, but... Or actually his own natural expansion either. So really, not a whole lot that Cronimer needs to do here other than just take out this Faropod that's... This Faropod so should be no problem at all. This Faropod's coming in. We'll be able to do that. And this Faropod here, kind of wasting his time. Probably should be attacking the main base. There isn't a whole lot of defenses at the main base. It's one reef. Shalka is not bubble wrapping at all, but he does have chronoporting, or will have chronoporting coming up in a few seconds. We'll start to research that. And Kron Avern, on the other hand, is further in the future. Actually, Shalka? No, maybe Shalka isn't researching that. Apparently, Shalka is no longer actually researching gate tech. Or chronoporting, I mean. It's a little bit bizarre. He had been researching it further in the future, but that might be bookmark 5 here. 
that might be what it is. So, no, even further in the future, at the, at the present, there's no indication that Chrono has actually been researched. So it might be when he had originally done it, but it clearly has been undermined or has been stopped by his spending on units. Which is fine, because we really do need a lot of units for Chrono to be effective. Oh, and Rymark's pointing out that I lack the audacity and forced confidence that comes with the silly voice. Part of that is because I'm trying to be quiet right now because I'm not the only one in the house and I want to make sure I'm not distracting everyone else in the house. So, yeah, normally I would be a bit more audacious, but, well, I also want to be a bit considerate. Anyhow, Shalka is going to be finishing off, well, finishing off what Cryomart had coming into his base. So, Cryomart, not quite able at this point, it seems, to deal any meaningful damage to Shalka. Shalka, however, does have, oh, what is he... Now, Cryomart building up a bit more, but actually Cryomart may be falling back a bit. Shalka managing to save those far that he attacked with, not ending up losing them. And Dome's coming in. However, this is where all the Sepipods were. None of them actually went to, to attack, but one of the Sepipods able to take out that Dome and the defense force coming in. Cryomart putting his Sepipods into a better position, but even then, not quite enough. It's... This is not going to be it. So Shalka actually losing his Farpods once again, and this is very nearly unplayable past... Cryomart able to defend as well. At this point, Cryomart needs to counterattack. There's not much that can be done. Cryomart is starting to get low on cash. He's starting. He's losing one of his crates too, and go, he's gonna see what Shalka has done. Where Shalka has hit at least one of his expansions, but Shalka doesn't have as many units coming up at the moment, and he just he has a bit more economy. But right now, Cryomart has definitely an army advantage, and he can just send in these heavy pods into. Cryomart just send him into Shalka's base and take out this Akron without any issue. I'm a bit surprised he isn't doing that. In fact, I... I really kind of... I'm very surprised. Right now, Shalka actually has the defense up. He's prepared for this just in case it would happen, but... Cryomart had a small window. And actually, he does. If he goes back about half a minute from here, he does have a window to take care of everything. But he's not taking advantage of that. Kind of unfortunate. But that's how it goes. I guess he doesn't really know that he has that opportunity. And Shalka... Now he's been revealed, so Cryomart will be able to take care of this expansion, take out the RP, and take back a bit of the economy game that Shalka has been wresting from him. However, given that Cryomart has the center at this point, it's, it shouldn't be too hard. Right, Cryomart is just about done finishing setting his economy back up. Really, just needs to have that... Well, the RP is the center built. These RPs need to be put into place. But once Shalka's is gone, then it should be no problem. And Shalka trying to counterattack with Octos and Seppies. Not a good idea at all, because the Seppi Pods are long gone. The Seppies as defense would have been a great idea, and probably... Like, if they didn't def if they didn't stop the Seppi Pods from coming, had Cryomart sent them in, Cryomart would have just not sent them in. So Cryomart never would have sent the Seppi Pods in because of the Seppies, if nothing else. I know it's a little bit hard to understand, but bear with me. Basically, the Seppi Pods, had they been sent, would have been retreated. That attack would have been echoed out just because it would have been a useless attack that would have left Crown Aberrant said he's dead, or said he paused dead. So Crown Aberrant still not being very aggressive. This is not unusual for Crown Aberrant. He has a tendency not to be super aggressive for most of the game, and really it's not unusual for Akron in general, because aggression, well, discretion for scouting isn't a bad idea. Aggression in general is often punished by having your entire defense force, or entire attack force being destroyed with no chance of retreat. So it's not entirely surprising, but it is still a little bit awkward. Anyway, Shalka trying to set up a no-man's land here in the middle of the middle, or the north center base. I don't think Cryomart cares much though, he has this expansion set up as well, so Cryomart resting back economic control and Shalka getting his chrono porting going, finally getting that set up again, <laughs> apparently he had tried at least three times. So getting his chrono porting up once more, might be trying to send these seppies back, no, that, well that won't be useful at all. If he does try to send them back, he's doing it the wrong way. And setting... Well, for Crown Aberrant, Crown Aberrant actually not getting his own Chrono Porting. Crown Aberrant is just building more units, building more RPs, and really doesn't have to worry about these Seppies, because one of them is Chrono Porting... Oh, wow, actually, one of them did manage to survive long enough to Chrono Port back. However, it'll probably only Chrono Port back to die. There's really not much else to be said for that one. So, Crown Aberrant in a really good position right about now. Shalka has his Chrono Porting, which is good to have, but he doesn't have a lot of money to support it. And now Cryomart just setting up his Sepipods at his north expansion. Setting up more Sepipods even then. 
And these Seppies, not even bothering, just echoing out, probably going to chronoport from here, and then... Oh no, Shalka's actually undoing the chronoport entirely, so Shalka not chronoporting those, heavy those Seppies back at all. Which, like I said, was kind of totally useless, since the Seppies would have hit the dome anyway. So, Kronaber, like I said, just needs to attack. I think he's saving up for a he's saving up for chronoporting now, clearly. Getting enough money for that, and once he does so... Then he'll probably just chronoport back these Seppi pods and attack with everything in the main base. And Shalka will be able to counter, because he does have his own Seppies, which he can chronoport, of course. And the Farpod as well... Well, actually, the Farpod won't be of any use. It might be able to do a little... Actually, he might try to go for a chronoport assault with that. That would be a good idea. If he goes for that... Yeah, it goes around here, chronoports back right next to the Akron, hits the unplayable past. Kronaburn will actually have a much harder time dealing with that, though I think Kronaburn may suspect Shalka has chronoporting, and Kronaburn still doesn't have it. At this, at the 1920 mark, he could get it, but he is not focused at that point in time quite yet. And this is when Shalka is actually sending in some forces to attack that Akron. So it's a little hard to say what's going to happen. And interestingly enough, one thing to point out about this is that in non-assassin mode, killing someone just involves destroying everything they have. In assassin mode, you can also kill the Akron to win. But in non-assassin mode, this means you can destroy, you have to destroy their production structures in order to win. So trying to recover from someone killing you is extremely difficult. In assassin mode, if you kill the Akron in the Unplayable Past, but your opponent has, further in the future, built up chronoporting and sent back units to stop you, that could actually avoid the paradox that normally occurs from trying to bootstrap one's own defenses. Because you're trying not to defend the production, but you're trying to defend a secondary element that's not actually directly related to... It's causally independent of your production. But no, it looks like Shalka actually getting distracted by this dome over here at the south and losing his Faropod and giving away his Chronoporting too, so... Crown Aberrant going to be well aware of what's going on at this point. Because he is focused at this point in time, we'll see... Actually, he won't see anything, because the Faropod will die before it can Chronoport. Never mind! So Crown Aberrant might know that Shalka has Chronoporting... But it's not fully clear, however, Chronoport could easily get Chronoporting, and he appears to be double-checking if anything has gone on yet in the Unplayable Pass, but no, nothing really. So, just getting rid of this dome as well, and losing a Seppi Pod in the process, that's actually kind of harsh. That Seppi Pod did not make cost, but oh wow, Chronoport actually... Chronoport got destroyed? That's... odd. Apparently Chronoport had gotten destroyed further in the future. Oh, I see, there's quite, there quite a powerful attack further in the future, and it looks like this is where the Fire Pod had originally gone, but... I'm a bit surprised Shalka got it distracted. I think it... That was clearly a mistake. I don't think Shalka had meant to do that. I think he got distracted by something else. Because there was really no reason to go to that expansion down there. And Crown Aberrant now expanding along the south side of the map, having destroyed Shalka's expansion here. So Crown Aberrant establishing complete map control. I'm really not sure how Shalka could get out of this, given that he's, his main method for getting out of this, that is the Faropod being chronoported back, didn't actually pan out. So Shalka... I don't see any way out of this for him. He has some defenses around his Akron, but no, but only one Reef. No real healing. And not a lot of units coming up. And That Farpod was a great move, but just set up in a poor place to have an attack go. And this dome has been long enough... That dome's been here long enough to actually take care of any Farpods that try to go back. So Kron Aberrant... Kron Aberrant has this game in the bag. He just needs to attack, and he's won. He is setting up a lot of domes. I should... I've actually never really seen an Akron game with this many static defenses. And that's probably... I'm actually kind of glad they're being used. Because they are pretty powerful. It's just... They didn't get used very much before, I think, because their range was so short. But now the range being increased because the range increases with the la latest version. Domes are actually useful. And Bastions and Defense Turrets as well. But yeah, Defense Structures are actually useful nowadays. And it's neat to see that, because I rarely saw that before. Oh, here we go. So, Shalka trying to set up one last stand, getting a couple reefs right outside of Crown Aberrant's base, but I don't... I don't expect this will actually do too much damage. He might start setting up progenerating some Faros as well, and maybe see what he can do, but I don't think Crown Aberrant can lose from this point. Or it's very difficult for him to lose. He'd have to try to lose. Really, Crown Aberrant just needs to attack at this point, and he's won. And frankly, I'm a little bit surprised he hasn't done so, or even just tried attacking. Like just to see, just to test the water, see if Shalka has defenses in order to actually stop him. Because right now, Shalka doesn't. He has two, well, yeah, two domes. And no, well, one Seppi. This is at the 2224 mark. He's basically not at all equipped to defend against this. So yeah, I don't see how this is supposed to work for Kron Aberrant. 
I or against Crown Aberrant rather. I think Crown Aberrant has pretty much got this, and I don't know why he's not going for the kill. Probably just not confident he can, but he definitely can. There's no concern there. So if we just kindly go for the kill, that would be really appreciated. Ah, here we go. Crown Aberrant actually going. Oh no, Crown Aberrant getting attacked. Shalka is going for his attack right now. The 22, 21, 30 mark, or 22, 34 mark. The assault force coming in and dealing a fair amount of damage. Actually, gonna be able. To, they'll get rid of that dome just fine. This expansion's going down. Shalka is not doing anything to change this from the looks of it. No, he's chronoporting back. He is definitely doing something to change it to make it even harder to deal with. And yeah, the Chrono Clones coming in with their past cells, though this might cause a small problem since they, the, the originals were getting attacked first. So the Chrono Clones might be weakened on the next iteration of this. Anyway, Shalka lose, taking some damage. He's losing these reefs, or starting to lose these reefs as heavy pods coming in. With the Octopods as well for defense, but the Octopods getting rid of some of the original units before they Chronoport back. However, with Grekin Chronoporting, this gets really weird because, of course, the units are Chronoporting wherever they stand. So, having moved, these units, I mean, obviously a lot of them will die in the next iteration, they'll be weaker. But, Shalka. Actually, it looks like Shalka will be losing most of that assault, so this is gonna. This is not gonna work for Shalka at all. He's losing a lot of the originals, he's not losing a lot of the Chrono Clones, which are the ones that should be taking all the damage. And Chronomart also Chrono pointing back some Octopods to deal with this before it even becomes a problem. So Shalka doesn't even have the units to attack with in the first place. They do Chronoport back to try to do what they can, but they're getting attacked by these Octopods. And the Octopods, of course, not the originals. The originals being kept at home. So, and of course, these Oct Octos won't even be Chronoport back ultimately. So Shalka losing most of that Chronoport. Two of the Octos remain, but the rest of them are completely. Actually, no, the entire Chronoport's been aborted. Shalka losing everything here. So this entire assault being completely undone by Chronoport's Chronoport. Although, was Chronoport's Chronoport also? Aborted? It looks like it was. Well, that's bizarre. No, he's chronoport back to Sepipods here. No, the Octopods are definitely chronoported back. I'm not sure why the chronoport got aborted or cancelled or something. It's... I don't know if he... I mean, I suspect Chronoport may have tried to permaclone this. That's a little bit awkward. Usually, I mean, okay, I know it's kind of a thing that people try to do, but... Really, it's pretty unsafe. I don't know why Crown Emmett would try to do that. So it looks like Crown Emmett does have those Octopods. He does have the Self Force coming in. He might have had the... No, the Octopods couldn't have been undermined. They were already built before these RPs were destroyed. So there really isn't anything more to go with that. And it looks like Crown Emmett is just going for the the kill at this point. Except Shalka losing everything at this point. Okay, Shalka has pretty much lost everything. As you can see, the Red Time Wave is carrying the damage, but... Actually, Shalka... No, Shalka's losing. This is Crown Emmett's point of view, so... Crown Aberrant's Chronoport's properly coming in, getting rid of everything that was here, and... Where are the originals? No, these are the original Octopods. They're not Chrono Cloned Octopods, so these Octopods are just doing what damage they can. So yeah, Crown Aberrant still manages to fend off this assault, and also double-checking that he can fend off the assault. And that's... Well, that's it, really, although it looks like there were some Permaclones going on, so... Crown probably has some permacloned octopods hanging around here somewhere that we'll see once the blue time wave comes along. And Shalka, on the other hand, taking tons of damage. Sepipods, Farpods, Octopods coming in and just tearing apart his base. He is getting specials. I'm not sure why he doesn't have anything to really use it with. He doesn't have Farligos and he doesn't have Octoligos for Nanites. So really, specials is kind of a waste of money. I think that might have been a mistake. That might have been a mistype or misclick. He might have meant to... No, he is getting specials. He's not changing that at all. Like I said, I'm not sure what he's intending to do with that. They're... Like, specials only upgrades abilities for legal class units. It doesn't upgrade any abilities for any other units. All the recovery abilities are free. You get them from the start. So I'm really not sure what would come up for that. And... Yes, Shaka did actually take a bit more damage this time around. In the time, As you can see, the green time of carrying even more damage for Crown Aberrant and against Shaka. This is Shaka's point of view, so red damage is Crown Aberrant's damage. And, yeah, this is the Cranamert destroying Shalka's base. Cranamert will be able to destroy Shalka completely fairly soon, as soon as he pushes. And, like I said, this has been the case for quite some time. Shalka has been on the back foot for most of this game. That Cranamert attack was pretty clever, but not really well positioned. I don't know if he realizes how much of the map Cranamert has under his control. So, at this point, Cranamert is going to be basically just finishing everything off. Shalka has... Shalka has no chance at this point. 
Now the player actually really checking what's going on in the earlier time waves. But yeah, Crown Aberrant just needs to push. And he's not doing so. A little surprised at that, but two Sebi Pods coming in for Shalka. Won't be able to deal too much damage. The Sebi Pods for Crown Aberrant coming in. Actually, oh, Shalka. Shalka Crown pointing back one of the Sebi Pods for it to only die. So dealing a bit of damage to. A bit of damage to Crown Aberrant Sebi Pods, but not very much, and there will be a reef there to heal it up eventually. So, not a whole lot of meaningful damage that Shalka can deal at this point. I think Shalka really should just surrender. I'm surprised he hasn't. I'm a bit surprised he got specials, and I don't know what his intentions are. I really don't. He's His actions right now are very confusing. He's taking a lot of damage in the playable past, though. Mm. That's not really anything to be right home about. I... Th yeah, all the reefs coming in. This is the Sepipod that was damaged before... So really, that damage amounted to nothing. And there we go, Crown Aberrant pushing in with everything. Will be finishing off... He's finishing off Shalka right now, so Shalka has no chance to deal with this. Octopod, Sepipod's coming in to deal with everything here. Getting rid of the Spire first, along with one of the Domes and the Progen Triad going down as well, so... The Akron isn't even going to be targeted before everything else is dead. Shalka has completely lost this game. Can't really emphasize how much more lost this game could be right now. And, oh, just to put it, it at insult to injury, Chrono pointing back to the entire Assault Force to attack Shalka in the unplayable past. This is, yeah, Shalka's already lost this game. And one of the octopuses is hanging around to get rid of this progen triad, so really nothing Shalka can do about this. However, Shalka did send back, he did build some domes, actually, further in the unplayable past. Looks like he... No, he didn't build one, he just moved it right next to the Unplayable Pass edge. So in the Unplayable Pass, Crown Aberrant is still able to take care of all this stuff here. Able to take care of everything that Shalka has to deal with his stuff. And all of his originals actually staying back and avoiding getting hit. So that's pretty good. At this point, not much can be done about this. So Crown Aberrant has pretty much nailed this. Nicely done. I think Crown may be trying to move his forces out of the way so they don't accidentally chronofrag. It might have... I, I, looked like his units were accidentally chronofragging themselves. Hard to tell, though. Nope, never mind. The units are actually doing fine. So, yeah, there's... These Sepipods are being a bit of a distraction, but at this point, there's not much Shalka has to defend with. Is Shalka sending anything back? No, Shalka is not sending anything back. He actually, at this point in time, has nothing further in the future. So, Shalka has played out this game and surrendered. So, nicely done, Crown Aberrant. And that was first game, so it'll be a second game coming up shortly. Stay tuned.